Yeah, hit the light. Today, we are starting our discussion on natural selection. You have access to the slide deck on the Google Classroom. Where is my clicker? What do y'all do with my clicker? Um, I stole it. That is not Santa Claus. Nope, that's not Mendel. We got a new scientist to learn about. There we go. There we go. There we go. And we're going to learn about him here in a minute. Okay. There we go. Let's try that. First up, we need to go back over our objective. Okay. So, before we get into anything, I need to know how confident are you that you can identify changes in genetic traits over several generations? One, I ain't got it, Ms. Heiss. Two, yeah, I, but I still need help. Three, quiz me. Four, Ms. Heiss, have a seat. I can teach this. Show me those fingers. One, two, three, or four. Four, I'm speaking or not. One, two, three, or four. We should be fairly high on this one, right? How about what are the differences between natural selection and selective breeding? Same scale, one, two, three, or four. No. All right. If you haven't already written natural selection at the top of your paper when we started last week, natural selection is what goes at the top. In your Q column, we're going to start with genetic traits. Issue. Okay? Issue. Genetic traits goes in the Q column. Genetic traits, Rob. Very good. Ms. Heisman, Mr. Harrison, you're taking notes. Stop being out of control. <laughs> All right. Hey, we've discussed genetic traits before. What are they? I know it's like the traits you get in the genetics. The traits you get in the genetics? Traits you get from mommy and daddy. The traits you get from mommy and daddy. Genetic traits are traits that are passed from parent to offspring. Characteristics passed from parent to offspring. They're the genes that are in your cells that carry all of your information. Horton, you're on camera. <laughs> Where's Nicholas? Okay. Both plants and animals have inherited traits from their parents. What about plants? Both plants and animals have inherited traits from the parents. <laughs> Take a look at these puppies. Puppies. Two brown ones, one black one, and one monkey. Okay. Is black one? What else do you see? I can make it. I just see a bug. I see. I see eye color. They're all kind of blue. Besides the same eye color, black and white. white. So there is two black ones. One has a white chest. Okay. I want their balls. One has extraordinarily long. Balls. They all have the same ears. They all have the same ears. I'm gonna just grade that inside. Because look at the multicolored ones. It's got shorter ears than the other ones. It has shorter ears. Than Okay. 
have the same hat. We already said they have the same hat. Because what? All four of these came from the same parent. The what? One of the all kids. Yeah. Well, that can't happen from the same litter. But they came from the same parents at different times. Yeah, but in the same litter. Come on, Baker. I'll show you one thing that dogs. Like, yeah. their litters can come from two different dads. Like, yeah. Like, maybe that's true. Like, more like... That happens to my dog. Yeah. Yo, that's, so that's what I'm talking about. Hey, that might be the boss. I ain't gonna hold you. The, my dog is... My dog is right. She does not make sense. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Charles Darwin. Oh, it's an old man. Oh, he's now. Good. Okay. Let's try again. Yes, you have this in the squares in your cutouts, but I want you to write this in your two columns. Charles Darwin. He was an English naturalist. Okay? Charles Darwin was an English naturalist. He was born in 1809 and died in 1882. He was famous for his work on natural selection. He spent five years aboard the HMS Beagle. That's uh, HMS Her Majesty's ship. So British, right? HMS Beagle. And he sailed all around on this ship doing a whole lot of research. He was the scientist aboard. Typical. What would happen is all these warships, because the <coughs> British was the great empire. <coughs> Bless you. Britain was the great empire, and they would send out all these warships to check on all their territories and maintain control over the world. And they always had scientists aboard as well, because well, why not? We've got to control the world. Let's continue with research and know-how and enlightenment. And Darwin was one of those scientists aboard a one of those ships. There's a good... There's a few good movies regarding their lives that get a lot accurate and a lot fictionalized, but still, you can watch some of those. <coughs> Master and Commander, they don't talk about Darwin specifically, but one of his contemporaries, but it's still a good juxtaposition. He got a lot of his research when they stopped in the Galapagos Islands, okay? And you see a lot of his research in his book on the origin of species. It was highly controversial at the time, <laughs> to the point that it strained his marriage. He, his daughter had died. It led him to do this research and search for meaning in a lot of different places. Okay? And he found a lot. Yes? Do you think, like, say these scientists didn't discover all this, do you think it affects our life much? Like, like natural selection, so you think that would affect it if they didn't really discover it? Yeah, it still affects our life, whether we know it or not. It council, still affects life. Well, like, like the council grows trees and they have to eat. I don't know how I, I don't know how to explain. You're a dog. Okay. <laughs> Darwin was a quintessential observer. He observed what was happening, and he took meticulous notes and wrote them down. Okay, that's how we got these observations. That's how he came to his conclusions. He watched. He observed species. He illustrated all these different species to see commonalities and differences. Adaptation. We don't have a lot of slides this go round. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we got some time after this. Maybe tomorrow. We ain't gonna have no All right. party time. Adaptation. <laughs> All right. Remember last week we wrote down our own definition, what we thought a definition for adaptation was gonna be. Now we have a real definition for adaptation. It is. A body part, feature, or behavior 
that helps a living thing to survive and function in its environment. I'll say it again, body part, feature, or behavior that allows a living thing to survive and function better in its environment. So, like on Friday, when we counted up the white beans and black beans that represented fur, correct? Yes. With no. the bunnies. Oh, bats. Which bunnies survived? Black and bats. Which yes. represented? Long hair. With fur. Fur. Mm -hmm. The bunnies with no fur did not survive. So, what was the adaptation? Long hair. Long hair. Long hair. Long hair. Long hair. These adaptations occur through natural selection. Look at these three pictures. Tell me one adaptation that you see. Favorite. Right. So you see the puppy fish, right? Yeah. So when it gets all spiky and puffed up, so basically when a predator tries to get it, it just blows up in its mouth. It's oh. So the spikes are an adaptation? Yeah. Uh -huh. Colton? Oh, you're stretching. Okay. Uh -huh. Scott? On that bug, it's got those webbed feet, so it's slender. The webbed feet? The webbed one's got spots so they can't see it. Okay, the spots act as camouflage. Cheetah, my bad. Well, cheetah, it's got a fast beat, so you can run it. It can run down it if you get it sprayed. Okay. The just the ambulatory structure. Oh yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a key cat. Okay. Ooh, the depth feathers help with its density. Oh, help with smoke. Boy, that big old beak helps drink the water. Say that again. That big old beak helps him drink the water. The way the beak is built, it helps them drink water. We learned about that one in the vegetable buds. Okay. Do you see any others? Oh, yeah. The camouflage on the cheetah. Yeah, well, I never said that. Well, I said, buddy, the fur on the cheetah. Okay, yeah. what about the fur? It's actually, it's actually, it's actually oh. So if it gets too cold, it won't get cold. Okay. okay. I mean, it lives in the Sahara in the yeah. desert, so. Oh. Are you not sure, my dear? The uh, the pufferfish got gills. Why the pufferfish have gills? Oh, we'll say. How's that an adaptation? Because it lives in the water. Because it lives in the water, so it can get the necessary oxygen. Scott, the pufferfish also has fins, which is wings. It does. Yeah, the pufferfish went in his mouth. They're tiny little bubbles. It got a fin somehow. Okay. Trinity. Oh. Yeah, we can have it. It has water for it. All right. Okay. Did you write down any of these adaptations oh, no. for extra points? No. Remember, anytime we answer these here, that gives you extra points. The fish got to remind me of porcupine. Kind of. Wait, they could be related somehow. They could be related somehow. I highly disagree with that. All right, hey, we, we reached a quick IMB. This time, during this particular uh, note lecture, when we reach a quick IMB, we're going to fill out one box of our cutouts. Yeah. So, yeah. go to your cutouts and go to the one that asks, what is an adaptation? Go to your cutouts, find the flap that says, what is an adaptation? It's right. It's and let's answer it. Hey, look, it even gives a sample oh. answer. Oh. Oh. Which one is it? Top oh. left. Bottom left. Which one are we answering? Ben says it's top left. Wait, wait, wait. Scott says it's bottom left. Oh no, it's top left. Top yeah, I said I said right. it's top left. Top left. It's top left. It's bottom right. What is an adaptation? My children's soul is top left. Let me touch the bell. So which one do you say it is? Everyone on top left. Top left. I think it's the top left. What does the top left say? Top left. Top left. Top left. Top left. Top left. Let me win. Let me win. All right, Christian. Ow. A body part for each of those behavior that helps a living thing 
survive and function better in an environment. Do you agree with Christian? Yeah. 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 No, 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 no. Right. Did you write soul. it down? I got half time. I want you soul. Let me write. Let's write it down. All right, I want you soul. One we'll time I fell in bed in with my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Out of time? With my bare hands. Practice my shit. I'm practicing with this right here. is where the organism that can function and survive in its environment better or best is going to produce more. It's going to have more babies. Oh, is that why like fish have so much? Uh, maybe. Because of this, then favorable traits the ones that allow them to function and survive better 
become more common over long periods of time? What does they become or because? Become. They will be great because. <laughs> okay. And that makes a favorable <laughs> adaptation become more common. So think about those adaptations that you listed or came up with with those three organisms on the board. Are those common for those organisms? on that instead of Per year 
with certain traits. Give me traits. Give me traits. Okay. Based on the data, which traits are advantageous to the species? Oh, more to the levels. Traits. Plural. Yep, traits plural. So I heard I heard one. What'd you say? No. More sensitive noses. Sensitive noses. More sensitive noses? Yes. Alright, do you see any more? Yes. Big what? Ears. what what you got? The big ears. Big ears? What about that long nose tail? Long, long, long tail? Do you agree with these? I really yeah. do. I do. Why? Oh, because they're oh, the They're the biggest. They're the, they're the most happy. Then they know what's happening around them. More sensitive to their environment. They have more They're more aware of. They have more offspring. All right, we're going to get to that in a minute. Okay? How do we know that these are the traits we want? Because they have more offspring. Because they so have more offspring. Like offspring. Right? They're, they're more There's more, more numbers. More faster with it. Why are these more advantageous, Colton? Ah, uh, because then they're aware to the. Uh, of their environment, they're, they know if there's a predator near them. Yeah. Which one? Which traits all, tell us that? that uh, nose. More sensitive uh, noses. And more sensitive ears. noses and the large ears can help them be aware of their predators. What about the long tail? Right? Hit them with the tail? What does the long tail help with? Whipping them. Swing them. What do tails on animals help with in general? Help them clean speed. Anyone? I don't know. Hang the trees. It's all right. I'm keeping my balance. Oh, I don't know. Balance. Oh, yeah, balance. Anyone? There you go. Balance. I got the big one. But what in the head you're telling me? Balance. What in the head you're telling me? Retracts. Me and I don't go pop with it. Balance. Let's write this down. Okay. So, how would we put this into a 3D thinking answer? You write it down, you write why you think that. Whoa. So we would write down the most advantageous traits are more sensitive nose, long tails, big ears, and more sensitive. They are advantageous because they have more offspring. Is that the only answer? What did Colton tell us? Oh, they can, they, they can help type a predator better. Surviving adapted environment. Yeah, I forgot my question on the last. Ricky, bias. I forgot my question. It means stop messing with me. He said, don't you know me? Are you natural or selected? Okay, here we go. In the two column, Darwin's finches. In the two column, Darwin's finches. We already talked about we already talked about Charles Darwin <coughs> and his study or the HMS Beagle. Okay? While he was in the Galapagos Islands, he studied very specifically finches, a type of bird. Okay? He theorized that the thirteen species of finches that he observed were all Related with a common ancestor. Really? Okay. Are you writing this? I do! Uh, that these finches develop distinct beaks through long periods of adaptation. And that each species of finches ate a different type of food. And that was the cause of the need for the different type of beak. Chill. You can wait. Write this down. Then, then wait.
I left my notebook somewhere. I'll be right here, right here, Miss Heiss. Okay, thank you. Oh, there's other. Pick insects. We don't have an example on this one, do we? 
No, we're doing the next one. Okay. So, type of bill, purpose, example. That helps you shorten down the information. So while you're writing it, I'll go over it. Other examples of beats that Darwin noticed in the birds. Okay? Because he didn't just observe finches. He was observing all kinds of life while he was on his excursion on the HMS Beagle. And he was a naturalist in general, so it wasn't just on the Galapagos Islands either. But a cone-shaped bill, like what the finches had, are good for cracking seeds, like sunflower seeds or walnuts, pecans, any, you know, nuts, any nuts that you have cracked, right? There's a thin, slender, pointed beak. Remember when we did our bird beak activity where you had to move the feed from one piece of paper to the other piece of paper? Oh, yeah. And some of you had toothpicks. Yeah. And you're like, this one. is horrible. This is awful. You oh, can't do this with a like, toothpick. That'd be like a woodpecker yeah. beak. It would be like a thin, slender, pointed beak. Yeah. You used to pick an insect. Yeah. I'd be woodpecker beak. Okay? Whereas a woodpecker uses a stronger beak. Okay, that essentially breaks through whatever's in its way. So why do they like take over the tree? Is that like for the nest? It's to get to insects. Sometimes it'll be to create a nest. It'll be to get to the insects or its food source. Okay. Yeah, it's a good one. Huh? Go look at that bird. No. Uh, why? Then there are hooked bees. Guys, come on. Hooked beaks. These are birds of prey. Hawks are typically what you see with these hooked beaks. They're used to bite and tear prey. A lot of birds on the shore coastlines will have hooked beaks because they're going fishing. Okay? They're going to use that hooked beak to tear up fish. Then mallard duck. They have that fringed beak that's used as a strainer to let water spill out and to strain out the plants and seeds and other small animals. Okay. We're going to stop here for today. Time out. You have an exit ticket on the Google Classroom. I need you to complete that exit ticket before you leave this room. Why did you not bring it? Why? Every day. Computer, Chromebook, pencil. Every day, bro. Every day. Oh, it's on the Chromebook. It's on the Chromebook. If you've not been issued one, don't worry about it. Okay, so what do you do about that? What did you say about me? Tell me that. Tell me about the ace. Uh, Baker, you hit the light. Let's go. This has to be done before you leave this room. This is not something you can do at home.
Why is everybody freaking out about the colors? 